These are the Hedamames, a pair of high-end headphones you can 3D print yourself on budget 3D printers. Unlike many other 3D printed headphone concepts, they mate high-end audio hardware with 3D printed parts to create something truly unique. But are 3D printed products like this the future? And would I trade in these for this? Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. When Vector Finesse, the team behind the Hedamami headphones, reached out, I was pretty keen to try building a pair. These are designed from the ground up with the intention of mating high-end components such as 40mm drivers and very plush ear cups with the parts you 3D print yourself. You've got the option of buying the digital download and sourcing the parts yourself, all the way up to buying a custom assembled pair of headphones in a huge range of color combinations, but I feel most people will go for the kit which contains all the hardware you need to avoid sourcing issues. In the box, you'll find the drivers, ear pads, pre-assembled headphone cable, as well as all the fasteners you'll need to complete the build. The 40mm headphone drivers are from Peerless by Tiffany and have a 32 ohm impedance, so you shouldn't have any issues driving them with regular DACs like the one in your phone, if it even has a headphone jack anymore. Before you can start assembly, you must first print your parts, and it's a good thing that really good in slicing instructions are provided, because it's not the simplest thing in the world for these cones. By design, the parts take advantage of gyroid infill as an internal support structure at a specific density, and messing this up will affect the sound quality. This can only be done in Cura with access to a lot of the advanced settings, so take your time and get it right, including the support blocker so the mini XLR port doesn't get blocked up with supports. The headphone mount similarly gets the gyroid support treatment, but with a few slight tweaks. Vector Finesse recommends PETG for all the parts, and I have to say, it's a material I don't super enjoy using, and I did destroy a glass plate in the process of trying. The difficulty of keeping PTG from stringing and warping, combined with that open edge gyroid pattern, makes the cups a seriously challenging print, in my opinion, and it took a few attempts to get right. I will note, however, that I made my life harder by using some recycled PET for the grey parts and PCTG for the cones, which is very similar in printability to PETG, but a little bit softer, I'd say, but I just needed that orange. The rest of the parts are easy enough to print, however I do have two gripes. When you mirror the cone, it mirrors the logo, which is a bit lame, and secondly, many of the parts are imported into the slicer at odd angles, so what I would do is orient them in the download to be ready to go on the bed, and even consider batching up the STLs for quicker slicer setup, for people when they buy the files. Once you've got all the parts printed and cleaned up, then it's time for assembly. Definitely the best part, in my opinion. Vector Finesse actually has a detailed build guide video already, so here's a montage of mine.
They really do look stunning though. The recycled grey PET I used actually became darker further into the roll, so one side's lighter and one side's darker, but I just love the orange, grey and black colour scheme that's going on here. And that's just one of the coolest parts for the product like this. You can make it your own with any colours you like or combination of colours and you can swap them out. If I want to go to this purple headband, I can. Make it yours. Nothing is glued in together permanently, which is just really neat. Plus, once you've finished and posted your build on their subreddit, they'll mail you out a serial number as proof that your build is truly unique. This headphone stand is provided by the team as well, and just on a completely random side note, it was printed on the CraftBot Flow XL with a 0.8mm nozzle using Prusa Slicer Mark III settings. Yeah, wild. It actually printed one of the best prints it's ever done using a profile that wasn't even designed for it. I just chucked some custom G-code into the header. So yeah, props to my friend for pointing that out. You could do it because that actually made the printer very usable. And this is a really, really neat stand, although it did need supports to print. But back on topic, looks are just one aspect of headphones unless you're wearing them for clout. Don't be those people. They actually have to be comfortable and sound good too. So, how do the Hedamames stack up against these weapons? We'll start with comfort. They are crazy comfortable to wear. Although they look super bulky, they're actually pretty lightweight and there's enough swivel in the adjustment mechanism for them to naturally and comfortably sit over your ears with just enough clamping force. The adjustment mechanism holds its place, but can be moved to another spot without too much trouble. And they did a great job with the ear, ear pad choice. It's really premium feeling and super soft. I actually prefer it to the AKG K712s, which um, are my day-to-day -day, like reference headphones, because I find these put too much pressure on the area just below your ear with long-term use. But these guys don't have that problem. And then there's the uh, Audio-Technica M50Xs, which are like barely over ear, and I find these very uncomfortable long-term. I was worried that having the two mini XLR plugs coming out in that Y lead would be obstructive, but for use at the computer, I haven't noticed anything. It's uh, 1.5 meters long, so it's just about the right length because I tend to trip over anything longer and destroy it. Personally, I prefer coiled cables, but there's literally nothing stopping me from adding one because the cable is entirely removable. Mini XLR plugs are standard, which in itself is huge for repairability. But what about the question probably everyone skipped to? How do they sound? Well, assessing headphones is super subjective. Different people prefer different things, and I'm not in a position to pull out frequency response charts and list off some technical benchmarks, go check out the amazing Hexibase for stuff like that. All I can do is compare them to my other favorite headphones and see if they deserve a spot on the shelf. And yeah, do they ever? The first thing I noticed is how full and deep the bass response is on these things. It is incredibly deep. And I don't mean that in a way that's muddy or distorted or destroys the rest of the um, audio in the process. I mean, it's like a subwoofer system of a really nice cinema, not the sub in the back of someone's riced up Honda Civic. For comparisons, I played this song called Rogue Bagel by Ott. Uh, Oat, I don't know how to say his name, one of my favorite old uh, old time artists of all time. I used to listen to his tracks back in uni. Um, and this track is full of sparkling highs of like guitar, some vocals, percussion, and even a flute solo, but it's underpinned by this massive sub bass riff. And these things blew my mind. I haven't heard this song in this way before, and I've been listening to it for over 10 years. As I said, my daily drivers these days are the AKG K712s, which are quite expensive, but they're known as reference headphones. They're open back and they're incredible, but they're incredibly flat, which is good for audio editing, you know, video production, audio production, that kind of thing, but it's not very fun. Um, and they're also a massive pain to drive because they're 62 ohms. Whereas with this thing, it's got this huge sort of bass and the highs are still there, but maybe the mids are more muted. Again, it's really difficult to tell, but it's just mostly about that intense bass response that grabs your attention. I, I'm not joking, the track sounds completely different between the two, it's mental. So maybe a 
More equal comparison might be with these, the Audio-Technica M50Xs. Um, they do deliver some of the same sort of bass frequency response, but um, it was sort of like, sort of going between them was like sort of squishing the sound a bit. Maybe the mids are brought up a bit with the uh, 50Xs. The highs are about the same, maybe a bit less crisp on the ed Hedamamis, but like this, these don't have that same monster low end. Um, and again, it's not distorted. I found out that you can push these to go super loud without distortion, which is kind of dangerous because I like that. I tried some gaming on a map with catapults, explosions and sword fighting and every clash and boom was thumpy and visceral, really bringing it to life, which is way more enjoyable than gaming with reference headphones, which like, I don't know why I've been doing that, but anyway. And again, I don't actually find the M50Xs all that comfortable, uh, but they do have Bluetooth, so I think for their best use case scenarios between all of these, these are good for music on the go. Uh, the K712s, uh, I'm definitely going to keep using for my audio production and stuff like video editing because again, very flat and um, descriptive response. But for stuff like gaming and media consumption like movies, these destroy everything else I've got. So they've definitely earned a spot on the shelf. But a good pair of headphones isn't really the reason I find these so fascinating. It's more the fact that they could be produced with a budget FDM 3D printer, like any Ender 3 style machine will do it, as long as it's well calibrated and you can print PGG reliably on it, because all the parts fit, even the spring will fit on that print volume. And as well as custom colours, you could also start messing with the design. I know that the team at Vector Finesse have already finalised a version with a monster 50 millimeter driver, but these are closed back, which means like they've got no openings on the back and that's probably why the low frequency response is so strong in them. So maybe there's room in future for an open back design, uh, which might play with that gyroid infill concept further. But there's, there's this one thing that I think is really the killer app for the future of these headphones. And I'm not joking when I say they're incredible for gaming. So why not combine the Hedamami's kit, which is about $120 USD, chuck in a half decent microphone capsule on a swing arm or similar and get a killer gaming headset. I'll probably end up doing that with mine anyway, but I think that's a really good use case for the response that these give you. They really are great for that application. In any case, I wanna see more products like this as we move towards, I hope, a future of localized manufacturing. I've lost too many pairs of headphones in the past to simple damage like the cable or a bit of plastic breaking that was sort of irreparable by design. So sustainable products where you can replace everything and just print parts deserve respect in my opinion. Vector Finesse have been developing these since 2019 and let me tell you, it's not easy to design anything sound related, so big props to them. They've also recently added a customizer so you can test what colors look good together for your own build or custom orders, which is super slick and I am keen to see what is next from them. A big thanks to the team at Vector Finesse for sending across the Hedamami kit free of charge for purpose of review and this video has been my own thoughts and opinions. Originally I thought Hedamami was a weird name, but then I just thought like Edamami and now I can't forget the name, so <laughs> there's that. Uh, links are, the, are in the description below and if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing to Make His Muse because it's my aim here to empower your creativity through technology and who knows, like maybe we'll start seeing more 3D printed tech products emerge in future, like 3D printed mechanical keyboards. I know they already exist, but maybe there'll be full on kits, maybe 3D printed webcams with high end sensors in a 3D printed body. I don't know. Either way, as it emerges, I'm definitely going to check it out on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.